G'day, Nathan from Oziaka here. I'm about to share with you one of the most incredible tips that has laid dormant, hidden in AutoCAD architecture since AutoCAD architectural desktop version one. It's been there all along. Now, we've known that the AutoCAD architecture roof object has no option to add vertices, but I'm about to show you that that's not exactly true. So what we do, take a line using the old AutoCAD trim command. Now just before we do that, how many edges, do, uh, points do we have? We have four. We trim that and all of a sudden we have five edges. Now if you've ever done that along with myself, you probably think, ah, that's not very useful. It's wrecked the object. In fact, if you do it in certain points, you can actually make sure you look like the object's just gone. All right, what the heck use is that? But actually what we've got is we've got another point. We've now got five-sided figure. Now, of course, the crucial thing is don't, don't slice it straight, but slice it at an angle. If you slice it straight, you simply get two more points. Slicing it at an angle, you get another point. And all of a sudden, we've got a completely different object. The other thing you notice is that something happens with these edges. Now, let's have a quick look at these edges. We're going to select those, all those edges. Now, our original object had its height set at 25, which is the height of the ceiling where the roof pitches off. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select all these edges and I'm going to then click on one of them that is at the right height and then I'm going to hit my return button and they're all going to reset. I'm going to go here over here and select the correct overhang and I'm going to hit that and they're all going to reset. The other thing we need to do is looking down here at slope, we will see that the edges that are cut have their slopes set to 90 degrees. So we're going to reset them back to where they should be at 25. And all of a sudden, our object is back to looking like a normal roof. Voila, I turned a square one into a, I don't know, pentagon. So let's just leave that and have a look at a, a situation that might occur in the real world. You've created a roof and you've done some complex editing. That means that you don't really want to delete the roof and recreate it. You could convert to slabs, which is always an option, and that's the recommended option, but it's not what I do. So here's the addition that the clients want to push out. They've changed their mind. They want a sunroom or something out here. So what do we do? Well, I'm going to show you a better way than even drawing the line. Draw a circle. Draw it at a, a certain size, and then you can just right click. You can just accept that as the trim, and you can cut that. Now, what's that given us? Well, I'm, go I'm going to do another circle. Oops, I can't get this right, can I? going to do it again because I just need one more edge you can see we've got now one two three vertices where I had one uh, bang all right now what you'll find is when you have a complex roof the roof will not move all right the secret is this is another big secret is use your stretch command and your roof will go where you want it to go uh, where's the other point? I'm just going to use N. Yeah, there it is. All right. You can see that this actually happens quite quickly. And if you have a, where's my end? If you have a complex roof, it's a lot quicker than recreating. Now, the, the idea of using uh, your circle is that you now have the original point. And I can just go back to the original point of that circle. So I know the, th the idea of the circle over just drawing the line is it preserves the original point. Now, as we showed you before, that's not very useful. It's not quite what you want. But all we need to do is go back in and reset all the edges. So we highlight all of them. We click on a, <laughs> we click on a correct one, but I didn't. Uh, click on a correct overhang and hit return. And then we just need to go to each edge. We can't do all of these at once, unfortunately. That's something that the roof creator's new object can do. 
And you can see we've probably missed one here. And voila, how easy was that? Now, if you've got a complex roof that uh, you don't want to recreate, it's very easy to make additions. And, and uh, what you will see is that this roof becomes a little bit uh, reticent to move. Your stretch command would do it. It's not broken. If I wanted to create a gable, it won't create it. It's not broken. You just might need to just do another way of doing that roof. All right, now if we wanted to create a gable and set it up at 300, all right, if we want to reverse that, we can still make the additions. We just might not have the easiest option available to us that was there before. But the roof object is fine. What a beautiful little object. Woohoo! So I hope that's of great use to you. Uh, that has many applications uh, in all sorts of ways. If you've done a big, huge roof and you think that your roof object you need to edit and you need to, to send to slabs to do any further editing, well, I've just shown you, you don't need to do that. Okay, one just little last tip uh, that I can share with you. If I just copy this across here, I can't move that, so I'm just going to pull it and I'm going to trim it because I just want this bit. Here's something that, uh, a quick way, generally speaking, in our neck of the woods, that's not going to move. just want to make this gable a bit bigger. In our neck of woods, that generally looks a bit prettier if it has an overhang. And I just want to show you a quick way that I do this. I've got what's called kits. Just, uh, it's a, just a block of different objects. I have a kit for a gable end and I have a kit for a um, uh, well, floating gable, gamblet, whatever you want to call it. And I've got it set up so that I can just drop it in place. And you sort of got an idea of what's there. But it's just uh, these are structural objects. Uh, I can quickly put these into place. They're all set up. Uh, and I'll show you some more on these things later on. But uh, this thing particularly that I wanted to share with you, I just, oh no, match properties. Uh, I just grab that and put it in place. If I quickly flip to my plan view, I need to just move it, I stretch it over. Go back to my other view. And you can see some things go pretty strange with that. those objects at times, don't they? If you're more used to using structural objects than I am, you probably know what's actually happening there. Uh, I'm going to grab this wall style. Some Another trick that I've got with this wall style uh, is it, it's just a particular roof and it didn't work that time. But what you should do, just a, a roof in a block and we take this centre point and instead of having a distance, we just set it to the midpoint I don't know why that didn't happen there, but what it means is that no matter where I drag my roof, that is always in the midpoint ready. Now, there's a couple of things I could do here. I could project to roof line. Nah, it can be a little bit fussy at times. I just simply grab that and move it to the correct position. And just quickly, I now have my underhang. Now there will be a, a line in elevation which you'll need to get rid of. In uh, rendering it pretty well disappears. There is a trick to that on the materials. We'll have a look at that later. Uh, the other thing is in plan view it actually looks perfect because it doesn't you, in plan view you can see that's a bit out. In plan view you don't know that that's actually a separate object and it looks fantastic. So if you have underhangs there, I can't actually, there's no edge there for me to edit. And that's just a way I get over that. So that's probably enough. Cheers.